Aya. Aya against. Hey everyone, Yeti Punk here. Pop Culture's extraordinaire coming to you today with an extra special one of my ultra rare, one of a kind copy of Astonishing Tales number 29 featuring the first appearance of Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, what makes this copy ultra rare and one of a kind, you ask? That no one else in the world is going to have this particular book? Is this was actually made as a dummy copy that was used on screen for AMC's comic book men's sizzle reel, which acted essentially as a pitch for the show that they used to take to AMC and to show how the format of the show would be. Their, you know, the ideas for the format of the, of the episode or how it would go. Essentially acted as a pilot of the show. Now, I purchased this directly from Mr. Pop culturalist himself, Robert Bruce, and he was also the executive producer of AMC's Comic Book Men. I purchased this from him at the, uh, I believe it was August of 2020 through Instagram. We've been Facebook friends before, and then when you join Instagram, of course, I followed him over there. We talked a few times and always left comments and things like that with each other's stuff at the time. And he posted this that he was digging through his storage locker, one of his many storage lockers he had. And then he ended up pulling it out and was showing everyone. And I just asked him, hey, you interested in selling it? I'm a huge fan of Comic Book Men. And uh, I always love that show. I wish it was still going to this day, quite honestly. And uh, if you haven't seen uh, comic, comic Book Men, I guess I should say it's um, a reality show essentially placed within a comic book store called Jane Silent Bob's Secret Stash in New Jersey. And people would bring in things to sell or wanting to buy certain items, comic books, toys, some pop culture stuff. But um, essentially this is what Robert made. This is a fake dummy copy of the first appearance of Guardians of the Galaxy. He made this for the sizzle reel simply because he couldn't find the actual, his actual copy of this book. So you, if you watch the sizzle reel, which is posted on YouTube, I'll post a link below. It's on Ming Chan, Ming's channel from uh, Comic Book Men. You can watch the full sizzle reel and you can see this book being used on that particular video. Now what makes this interesting is this comic book, <laughs> there's nothing really special to it. Um, when I purchased this from Robert, I asked him to do, to write something just saying that it's actually used because this is technically my first screen used, uh, prop essentially. So he ended up writing this on the bag and board that the book was stored and came in. So as you can see, it's a little dirty, but he wrote on the back, actual dumb copy book, Astonishing Tales number 29 used in AMC's comic book men's sizzle reel signed by Robert Bruce. And Robert was actually nice enough. I do have this stored in a frame. Of course, I took it out so everyone can see it here today. But he also threw in a really neat autographed picture of himself, which I didn't even ask for, which I thought was really nice of him. So <laughs> I always have that up with next to the uh, prop that he made. Now, there isn't really anything actually or special about the comic book he used. This is a Marvel Comics Presents. This is a double-sided issue. So this has Lunatic, which I guess technically it's Lunatic's first ludicrous appearance. <laughs> There's Silver Server, of course. And um, this was done in the 90s. So I guess technically it still is a first appearance comic book, right? Real comic book. First appearance of Guardians of the Galaxy and you have a Lunatic. Like, who remembers a Lunatic, right? But anyways, I thought I'd check it out, show everyone. This is something I really, really like, and it's, you know, it's it's extra special since we lost Robert Bruce, um, you know, since he passed away. So this is something that he made that, you know, I've wanted to share with everyone. So in the first half of the book, we have a U.S. Asian story, and we have Scarlet Witch. And we have cross info, crossover info for Hands of the Mandarin. Um, it's a, it says it's a crossover with parallel stories. So you have Force Works, War Machine, Iron Man, Force Works. Just tells you the copies or the issues that you can get for each part of the story. You know, tells about Marvel Readers Presents, letters, 
So you got US agent, nothing special here. Um, the, the story really doesn't have anything to it. The art is terrible. I like US agent as a character. Um, I just don't really care for the design of this particular one. I like the old US agent that looked essentially like Captain America. This one was his redo costume, which <laughs> with the art, you can't really see it. This is about the best that you can actually see it out of his whole story, as you can see. And then it goes right into Scarlet Witch, which, hey, come on, man. Scarlet Witch, gotta like that. This isn't a bad little story. It has Spider-Woman from Force Works in it. Um, it's a lot better illustrated story. Still nothing to it. I really like the way that they drew this hair and colored it. I think it looks really neat. Kind of almost like a symbiote style, but I, don't, I just really enjoy the way the hair looks there. And you can even see it caught, transferred over into this panel as well. And then that ends the story, which you can see some of Scarlet's butt cheek. <laughs> and then it goes over into the other side, which I can't really show you the cover that this was un that was this was pasted to um, you can see a bit of it down in the corner and up here but essentially it has vengeance on the cover um, vengeance being the character from Ghost Rider so in this story we have the lunatic short story and we have the vengeance short story with more Marvel readers um, letters and such so our first story up is lunatic um, nothing really much goes on in here, um, but the only thing that is kind of noteworthy, which um, Sean Beard, Be Beavis and Butthead collector on uh, Instagram, has the world's largest collect collection of Beavis and Butthead merchandise. In this comic, we actually have a, <laughs> um, essentially somebody drew a Beavis and Butthead. They appear in uh, th this panel here, down here up in here and over there and you can clearly tell by this it is clearly beavis and butthead like come on <laughs> even has the uh, kind of lip that butthead has going on which is the only noteworthy thing in here um silver surfer does make an appearance um that eyeball is actually really cool looking i really like that it's neat like he basically shows up doesn't really do much leaves with a surfboard kind of thing um, the next story up, we have Vengeance, which he's on the second cover of this. Um, there also is appearance of the character Fool Killer. I don't know if anybody knows that. Marvel Deep Cuts here, folks. <laughs> so he shows up. The artwork isn't... It's not my cup of tea. I think it could be drawn more like the Scarlet Witch. Or, um, well, even... Even done like the Lunatic book, and it would have made it look so much better for the character of Vengeance. So a few pages there, and it's already done, and you're back into the Scarlet Witch book. So that's it for today. I just wanted to show you my TV show prop. Um, I really would just want to say rest in peace, Robert Bruce. You know, we had a few communications over, you know, your time on social media, and... I found him online when the show was still going on and we got talking about different things. I asked a few questions and showed him things that I was picking up at the time and uh, he was actually responding back to me and uh, once on Instagram, you know, we had a few communications there and, and such and, you know, Robert Bruce is brought being a pop culturalist, I think, to everyone's attention that a lot of us have already been doing, including myself, since a very young age. You know, we get these items, we enjoy these items, but the one thing that I really like about doing collectibles and pop culture is looking into the history of things. Why was this made? Why was this not made? Why did they use this material? Is this material different from this particular one? So there's a lot to it that many of us don't know that we were already doing and there was a name for it, being a pop culturalist. And that's what I present 
and I strive to be. And I can't thank Robert Bruce enough for, you know, putting a name to something that we've all been doing within the hobbies that we enjoy. You know, being a pop culturalist doesn't hold you down to one specific thing. Like if you collect die cast cars and that's it. You know, pop, being a pop culturalist is you're into die cast, you're into comic books, you're into movies, you're into uh, toys and, you know, you're into movie posters and artwork and all different things. And that's something that I'm always in. I always dip my toes into any little thing and it's kind of nice knowing that there's a name for it out there and that's being a pop culturalist. So I'm just going to wrap this up for today. And don't worry, there's many more videos coming in the works. Um, stuff from my actual collection. I've recently picked up an awesome Looney Tunes haul. And um, yeah, so leave a comment, like the video, please. And please subscribe. It is 100% free. And my tripod goes. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I, uh, I, I